Hello friends, welcome back to India for IAS. This is Manjunath Mudol. In this video, we are going to study about Lok Adalat. Why Lok Adalat was in use? What is Lok Adalat? What are its objectives? What are the challenges that Lok Adalat is facing in its functioning? This topic falls under GS2 paper, Indian Polity. GS2 paper, Indian Polity. This Lok Adalat topic it is very important with respect to prelims and mains with respect to prelims and mains the reason being low katalat is an alternative dispute resolution mechanism alternative dispute resolution mechanism so it is the upsc it has asked questions both in prelims and mains based on alternative dispute resolution mechanism so exclusively in prelims the upsc has asked questions on low katalat so this Lok Adalat, it is being in news every now and then. So that is why it is important topic. So this topic, it is also important for KS exams, both KS prelims and KS mains. KS prelims and mains. So yake Lok Adalat news alittu. So other note other, right? the Lok Adalat was in news because over 1.14 crore cases settled at third national Lok Adalat 2024 organized by NALSA. So, because of that, it was in news. The NALSA, it is a National Legal Services Authority. It conducted the third National Lok Adalat of 2024. And in that Lok Adalat, over 1.14 cases have been settled. Now, we will look into the concept and evolution of the Lok Adalat in India. So, it's Lok Adalat. It is also called as People's Court. It is also called as People's Court. It is a system of alternative dispute resolution. So it is a system of alternative dispute resolution. It focuses on amicable settlement of disputes. It focuses on amicable, that is mutually agreeable, amicable settlement of disputes. It draws inspirations from traditional system of village panchayats. So what is the inspiration for Lok Adalat's village panchayats? Where disputes settled without formal litigation. What happens in village panchayats? Without any formal litigation, disputes have been being settled. There is no formal litigation. So the Legal Services Authority Act 1987 it formally establishes Lok Adalats in India. So, what is the statutory provisions for Lok Adalat in India? Legal Services Authorities Act 1987. So, this is the legal or statutory provisions for Lok Adalat in India. So, coming to the constitutional provisions, which constitutional provisions enables the government to come up with Lok Adalat? So, there is Article 39A in the Indian Constitution in Directive Principles of State Policy. This article, it talks about the providing free legal aid to ensure equal justice for all citizens. This article, it talks about providing free legal aid. So, that is the provision of the Article 39A. So, this Lok Adalat mechanism has been rooted in Article 39A of the Indian Constitution. It also aligns with Article 14. Article 14. That is equality before law and Article 21. Article 21, that is right to life and personal liberty. So, it, aim, it aims to ensure speedy and accessible justice for everyone. So, what is the main aim of the Lok Adalat? To ensure speedy and accessible justice for everyone. Now, we will look into the objectives of the Lok Adalat. So, the first one is to relieve the court backlogs. In the lower judiciary of India, as on 2023, there are around 4 crore cases pending. So, this Lok Adalat, it relieves from, it amicably settling the disputes between the 
different parties it aims to reduce the pendency of cases in the lower courts the second one is to provide inexpensive justice the lok adalat proceedings are free of charge they offer a cost effective way for people to resolve disputes that is there is no fee no fee to resolve the disputes via lok adalat mechanism so it is a cost effective way of getting justice the third one is accessible to all this lok adalat this system it allows justice to especially the marginalized sections of society who might not have resources to approach the formal judicial system so this provides accessibility to marginalized section of society so they cannot afford the heavy cost of the formal litigation process so that's why it is accessible to all sections of society the fourth one finality of the settlement settlements in lok adalat are binding and have the status of a civil court decree so that is the major feature here the settlements of the lok adalat are binding and they have a status of civil court decree so this is about the objectives of the lok adalat now we will look into the salient features of the lok adalat the first one is no court free litigants need not pay any fees to settle their disputes in lok adalats the second one is it is a voluntary participation there is no compulsion for the parties to pro- participate in the lok adalat to settle their disputes so it is a voluntary the third one is mutual settlement so in lok adalat both parties must agree to settle disputes for it to be a resolved in lok adalat there is no imposition of a decision instead it is arrived at through negotiation and conciliation so this mutual for the settlement it has been arrived at conciliation and negotiation there is no imposition of the any decision on any of the parties then the fourth feature is pd and informal process unlike formal courts which take years to settle a dispute the lok adalat here the proceedings are informal quick and straight forward they resolve cases in one or two days then the fifth feature is binding award the awards the lok lok adalat awards are binding on the parties in hold now we will look into the types of lok adalats the first one is permanent lok adalat second one is national lok adalat third one is mobile lok adalats permanent lok adalats they are established under section they are established under section 22b of the legal services authorities act 1987 they are established for public utility services such as transportation postal service etc they have jurisdiction to decide disputes related to these services so they are established for the purpose of public utility services then at the national level lok adalats these are held at regular intervals across the country on a single day to dispose a large number of cases in a single sitting single day single sitting national level adalats then the mobile adalats mobile lok adalats these are organized to reach remote and rural areas to reach remote and rural areas they ensure justice is accessible to people in every corner of the country now we will look into the types of cases that are being handled by lok adalats the first one is matrimonial disputes matrimonial the second one is motor vehicle accident disputes motor vehicle accident disputes third one is land acquisition land acquisition disputes compoundable criminal offences family disputes civil cases and other coming to the advantages of lok adalats lok adalats are efficient and speedy compared to the formal civil courts then they are cost effective there is no fee in uh, settlement of disputes in lok adalats they foster harmony the reason being 
disputes here are settled through negotiation and conciliation so they foster harmony then there is a reduction of court backlogs since the cases are being settled to low low adalats there is a reduction in the backlogs in the lower courts coming to the challenges that are being faced in low adalats the first one is non compulsory nature the participation in settling disputes by a low adalats is voluntary so it is not a compulsory so parties may not show willingness to settle disputes by a low adalats second one is limited jurisdiction so the low adalats have very limited jurisdiction compared to the civil courts then the third one is lack of awareness there is no awareness in the citizens regarding the working mechanism of the low adalats then the fourth challenge is quality of settlements sometimes the quality of settlements is lower compared to the civil courts so that is one of the reason for what is the, that is one of the challenge that is low adalats are facing so what should be the way forward to overcome these challenges one is increasing awareness about the low adalats in the people then enhance the role of the low adalats increasing its mandate to cover more jurisdiction then integration with technology use of digital tools or ict so that the low adalats can be held over online mechanism this is all about low adalats its objectives features working mechanism challenges it is facing and its significance based on the topic that we have discussed so far that is low adalats here we have provided one plinth practice question which contains three statements go through all the three statements and comment your answer the answer and detailed explanation for this question is available in the pdf handout which you can download by joining our telegram channel thank you for watching see you in the next video till then happy learning